In this video, we're going to set up NeoVim to be the perfect editor for working with C++. By the end of this guide, you'll have auto suggestions, code completion and encode static analysis, auto formatting on save, and powerful debugging capabilities. To get started, you'll want to make sure you have the latest version of NeoVim installed. At the time of recording, this is version 0.9.1. I'm using Arch by the way, so I'll install it using Pac-Man. Feel free to use whatever installation method works for your operating system. Next, you'll need to have a nerd font installed in order to see icons from within NeoVim. I'm using the JetBrains Mono Nerd font for mine. You'll want to install this as per your operating system's instructions and set this up in your terminal. Finally, make sure to have Git installed on your system as well. With everything ready, the next thing we want to do is set up a base configuration. My preferred option is NVChat, which provides some powerful NeoVim plugins to get us started, while still giving us a great deal of freedom for customization. If you have an existing NeoVim configuration, first make sure to back this up and clear out your local cache using the following commands. Now we can use our single line to install NVChat on our system using Git. You can copy and paste this from the description as well, rather than typing it out. Once that's done, open up NeoVim using the nvim command and you'll be greeted with a prompt to create an example config. Make sure to type in n as in no at this point, so you start from the same base configuration as I do. Once you submit your answer, you should see NeoVim and the Lazy Package Manager download and install our base plugins. Give this a little time and it'll complete. Now all that's left to do is to change NeoVim to use a much more appealing theme. We can do this by pressing the space T and H keys to open up the theme switcher. Once inside, we can navigate to the best theme ever, Capuchin, and set it for NeoVim. Nicely done. The first feature we're going to want to add is auto suggestions and code completion. We can do this by adding in something called an LSP server to NeoVim. For C++ we have a couple of different LSP servers to choose from, but my preference tends to be CLangD, which will provide linting and static analysis in addition to code suggestion and completion. So we're going to use it. The first thing we want to do is install CLangD on our system. If you have the CLang compiler installed, then you should already have CLangD. However, I still think it's worthwhile to install it using NeoVim. To achieve this we can use a plugin called Mason which acts as a package manager for third-party dependencies. By using Mason, we can specify any external dependencies for our NeoVim configuration and Mason will manage them for us, allowing us to specify more of our configuration as code, which is a good thing. To do so, let's head over to our NeoVim configuration folder in our terminal. Once inside, open it up within NeoVim. You should be greeted with a blank stare. If you press Ctrl and N, you'll open up the nvim tree, which allows us to navigate around our directory. The next thing we want to do is navigate to the custom folder, which is under lua slash custom. This is where our main nvchat configuration will live. Inside this directory, you'll see the chatrc.lua file, which is basically our entry point for configuration within nvchat. Open this up and take a look. Inside of this file, you'll see a lua table called m is being created and returned. Inside of this M table, we're setting the UI theme to Capuchin. This file is also where we're going to import our custom plugins. To do so, add the following line. This line sets the tables plugin value to a new Lua file which we're about to create. To do so, navigate back to the custom directory in the NeoVim tree and create a new file using the A key. Name this file plugins.lua, which relates to the line we just added. Once the file is created, open it up, create a new Lua table called plugins and return it. This table is where we'll specify any custom plugins or plugin overrides. Next, let's add an entry for Mason in our plugins table. Inside of this entry, add a block for the options, which contains another table for our ensure installed value. Inside of this table, add an entry for clangd. Once you've added this line, go ahead and close NeoVim and then reopen it. This should load in our custom plugin configuration, and we can now use the Mason install all command to download and install clangd. Very nice. Ok, now it's time to configure our new LSP server for use within NeoVim. Head back on over to our custom plugins Lua file and add a new entry into our plugins table for NeoVim slash nvim lsp config. This plugin provides some out of the box defaults for a number of LSP servers, which makes it much easier to configure. Inside this plugin entry, add the following lines to add a configuration function. Inside this function, import both the nvchat lsp config and our own custom one, which we're about to create. Once that's done, head back on over to the tree view and create a new directory and file by using the A key and filling out the entire path. Let's call this configs lspconfig.lua. 
Inside this file, we're going to store all of our custom LSP configuration. Open it up and add in the following line to import the base NVChad LSP configuration. We'll also pull out the onDetach and capabilities functions for use in a second. Now we want to import the LSP config plugin. You may see a warning for this regarding conflicting names, but it shouldn't affect anything, so don't worry. Next, add in the following line to add and call the setup function of clangd in the LSP config plugin. Inside of the table we pass to setup, add in a new function for the onAttached value. Here we need to do some small overrides in order to fix a bug within nvchad and clangd. To fix this, just set the client.serverCapabilities.signature help provider value to false, and then call the onAttached function with our client and buffer number variables. After that, we can just use the same capabilities value we pulled out earlier. Go ahead and save this file and everything should be working as expected. Let's go ahead and test this out by jumping on over to some C++ code. Here I have a simple main function which is doing pretty much nothing. Before we start typing anything, let's go ahead and install the tree sitter language for C++, which will give us improved syntax highlighting for our code. To do so, type in the ts install cpp command. You can initiate this using the colon key. Once that's done, you should see some improved syntax highlighting. Now we can go ahead and test our autocomplete. If I start typing in std, you'll see some auto suggestions appear. And I can select them to autocomplete my code. You may have noticed this automatically imported IO stream for me as well, which is really nice. Let's also test out our LSP server's linting capabilities. Here I have an array of size 10. If I try and access the element at the 10th index, which is out of bounds, the linter will accurately highlight that this is a problem for me. Nice. Let's really push the limiting capabilities by seeing if our LSP server can detect an infinite recursion inside of a templated function. When we call this function inside of foo, we can see that the linter detects this as an error. Wonderful. The next feature we're going to add is formatting for C++ code, so that our code looks pretty all the time. To do so, we're going to use a plugin called nonls, which allows us to bind LSP functionality to non-LSP tooling. The first thing we're going to need, however, is a formatter. For this configuration, I've chosen to use clang format. Just like with clangd, we're going to install clang format using Mason. To do so, head back on over to your plugins.lua file and add an entry to your ensure installed options for clang format. Once that's added, you can call the mason install all command to download and install it. If you encounter any problems, just close and reopen NeoVim and try again. With clang format installed, we can now configure null ls to use it. First, add an entry to your custom plugins Lua file for null ls. Next, we need to specify when we want this plugin to load. As the internal sources also have a file type associated, let's set this to load on event type of very lazy, so that it always loads, but shouldn't impact startup time. We then need to add a function for our plugins options. As these options can be rather verbose, we'll want to specify them in another file. That means we'll just import the file here and return it. After that, we can go and create this new file. To do so, head back on over to the custom configs directory and create the new file using the A key. Let's name this nullls.lua and open it up. Inside, we're going to create an empty Lua table called ops and return it. Next, add a line to import the nullls plugin in order to access the built-in sources. Then add a block inside the options table for the sources key. Inside of this block, add an entry for the clang format built-in source. Once that's done, save the file and let's test it out. Here I have some poorly formatted C++ code, at least according to the clang format style. Sorry for anybody who doesn't like to use KNR style braces. We can run our formatter by pressing space, F and M. And our code has been formatted to the default clang format style, which suggests that everything is working as expected. However, it's no secret that styling in C++ can be a bit of a flame war, and you may prefer a different kind of style than KNR. Fortunately, clang format has you covered. We can change the style of clang format by adding a .clang format file in our codes directory. We can generate one by using the following command, which will create a new format file in the style of GNU. Now if we head back to our project and run our formatter command again, we can see that it formats to this new style. So this is great, but running the formatter manually is a tad tedious. What we really want to do is set up auto formatting on save. To do so, let's head back on over to our custom null ls config file. The first thing to do is define an auto group that we'll use for LSP formatting, which will prevent us from having multiple formatters run on save. Once that's done, go ahead and add an onAttach function to the options table. 
Inside of the function, add the following lines of code. What this code does is checks that our client supports the formatting command and cleans up any auto formatting on save that already exists. After that, it initializes a new auto command for whenever we save our buffer, which we'll call the LSP format command on save. With that done, we can head back on over to our code and we can test this out by setting up a new .clang format file for Google style. Opening up our GNU formatted code again, if we go ahead and save using colon w, we should see that format change to Google style which I for one much more prefer compared to GNU style. Although I did learn C++ using Ullman, which is pretty similar. C++ is definitely one of the harder languages to get started with. And if you're learning computer science, there's a free and easy way to do so. And that's using the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. Brilliant.org is the best way to learn computer science, math, and data science interactively. Brilliant is a platform that is dedicated to fun and interactive learning with thousands of lessons that range from the basics to more advanced topics, with new lessons being added every month. I decided to try out some of the data science courses, and after a quick quiz, Brilliant determined what level I was ready for. I got started with the Introduction to Probability course, which had always been a topic that I had struggled to understand in the past. The way Brilliant delivers these courses in bite-sized chunks allowed me to learn at my own pace and gain an understanding I hadn't achieved before. Because of this, I have a better understanding of technologies that rely on probability, such as large language models and neural networks. So to try everything that Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash dreams of code, or click the link in the description. The first 200 to sign up will receive 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So sign up today to try out everything Brilliant has to offer and a big thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. The last feature we're going to add is a debugger, so that we're able to debug and run our code from within NeoVim. To achieve this, we're going to use a plugin called MVimDAP, which stands for the Debug Adapter Protocol. This plugin allows us to execute our code and attach to debuggers from within NeoVim. Heading back on over to our plugins.lua file, let's add an entry for MVimDAP to our custom plugins table. We now have two options for setting up a C++ debugger, either code LLDB or CPP tools. As we're using CLang for our LSP server, I'm going to go ahead and opt for the LLDB option in this video. So in Mason, let's add an entry for code LLDB to our ensure installed table and run the familiar Mason install all command. Once that's done, we now need to create a custom adapter for C++ and NVimDAP. We could write this ourselves, but there's a really nice plugin called Mason NVimDAP that has this written already. So we're going to use it. Back in our plugins table, let's add an entry for Mason and VimDAP. The next thing we need to add is the plugins dependencies, which are Mason and MVimDAP in that order. After that, we add in the options block and specify an empty table for the handlers, which means it'll load the default ones for us. Similar to Mason, we can specify an ensure installed option here, where we could place our debugger dependencies. Personally, I prefer to keep the primary Mason configuration as the source of truth. But if you prefer it this way, then by all means add it here. The last field to add is the event field, which we set to very lazy. The final package we want to install is the MVimDAP UI plugin, which provides a really nice user interface whenever our debugger runs. To do this, add the following entry into the plugins table and set the dependency to MVimDAP. Next, add in a config function with the following lines inside. These lines configure the plugin to automatically open the UI when our debugger is running. You can also copy this code from the GitHub repository. The link is in the description. After that, set this plugin to load on the event type of very lazy. Okay, awesome. So far, we're looking good. The last thing we need to do is add in some custom mappings to both add breakpoints in our code and to start our debugger. To do this, first create a new file called mappings.lua in the custom directory. Inside of this file, create an empty Lua table called m and return it. Next, add an entry to the table called dap. We'll use this entry for any MVim dap specific mappings. Inside of this table, set the plugin value to be true, which means the mappings will only appear when they are explicitly loaded. Next, add a table for the n key, which stands for normal mode, which is the vim mode we want our mapping to be available for. Next, we can define the actual key binding for our mapping, which is the leader or space key followed by D and B, which can be remembered mnemonically as debugger breakpoint. For this mapping, we want to call the dap toggle breakpoint command, which will toggle a breakpoint at the same line our cursor is on. Finally, we'll give the command a description, which will show in our which key menu. 
Now that we've got the gist of it, let's add in another mapping to the end table. This mapping will be used for starting our debugger. Let's assign it to the leader, D, and R key, which we can remember as debugging run. This mapping will call the dap continue command, which will both start and resume our debugger. Let's also give this a friendly description. Now all that remains is to load our mappings whenever nvim dap is also loaded. To do so, we first need to import the mappings into nvchad. To do this, head back on over to the chatrc.lua file and add in the following line. This will import the mappings from our mappings file and assign them to nvchad. After that, head back to our custom plugins.lua file and add in a config function to the nvim dap entry. Inside of this function, add the following line which will explicitly load the mappings under the dap table, which is what we defined them as earlier. With that done, we should be ready to go. Let's go ahead and test out our new debugger. Now that we're back in our code, the first thing we need to do to be able to run it is to, well, build it. When it comes to C++, it's pretty common to use either a makefile or cmakefile for managing a project's build commands. Neovim has some really nice plugins for both of those tools, but we're going to save that for another video. For now, we're just going to build our code using a simple terminal command. You can open up a terminal window in nvchad by pressing the space and H key. With the terminal window open, we can compile our code using the following command. The debug flag will ensure that we're also including debug symbols in our compilation, which is needed for debugging. Once that's done, you can exit the terminal by pressing Ctrl and X to enter normal mode and closing the buffer with colon Q. Back in our code, we can now set a breakpoint using the custom mapping of space D and B. We can see a breakpoint has been added by looking at the B next to our line number. With our breakpoint in place, we can now start the debugger by using our mapping of space D and R. This will prompt us to specify the file path of the binary we wish to test. If you ran the same command as I did, go ahead and set this as main, which is the name of my executable. As you can see, our breakpoint is hit and a number of panels are opened up, which we can use for inspecting our code or controlling our debugger by stepping over lines of our code, continuing until the next breakpoint, or just stopping execution. With that, we've turned NeoVim from a basic text editor into a powerful and configurable IDE for working with C++. If you have any other languages or tooling that you'd like me to do in this series, then let me know in the comments down below. I'll be doing a members only poll to decide the next video in the series. So if you want to have a vote in the next video I do, then please consider supporting me and becoming a channel member. Finally, I want to thank my three new channel members, Chiba, Ulysses, and maybe the second commenter. I also want to extend another thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.